guys welcome back to take dose and in this video we will look at move pieces to obtain a string problem which is from lead code number 2337 let's now look at the problem statement in this problem you are given two strings start and target both of length n each string consists only of the characters l r and underscore where the characters l and r represent the pieces where the piece l can move only to the left hand side only if there is a blank space directly to its left and the piece R can only move to the right hand side if there is a blank space directly to the right. The character underscore represents a blank space that can be occupied by any of the pieces L or R. We need to return true if it is possible to obtain the string target by moving the pieces of the string start any number of times. Otherwise if it is not possible we need to return false. Let's now look at the constraint before uh, we see any example. In this case, uh, the n value can range till 10 to the power of 5. So definitely we need to do operations below 10 to the power of 8. So we cannot go with an n square algorithm. Now let's uh, look at an example for better understanding. In this case, let's assume that our starts and target strings are given as mentioned. And uh, our constraints are the L can only move to the left and R piece can only move to the right. We need to return true if the start can be converted to target by doing certain movements okay and otherwise we need to return false so if you look at the first example if i want to convert this start to target then i need to exactly align each of the l and r pieces perfectly at their corresponding index so if i can just mention the indices the indices will be from 0 to 6. so the l piece here at index 2 in start must come at index 0 and can we do that yes we can do that by doing two movement of l and so this l will come to the beginning okay so we have matched the first l now if you look at the second r then the r in the target is at index 6 in start it is at index 5 can we move it to index 6 yes we can move it so the r will move to index 6 and therefore we have matched each of the pieces exactly at the same place by doing certain movements and that is why I will return a true in this case. Okay. Now, if you look at the second example, if I had the initial start point, like the L was present at index 2 and the R was present at index 5. And if the target string said that the L must be present at uh, index 1, can I move this to 1? Yes, I can do one swap and I can move this L to index 1. And so this is going to match. But if you look at this R which is present at index 5 and here it is present at index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it is present at 4, right? So can I move this uh, R from index 5 to index 4? Well, this is not allowed because R can only move to the right. And therefore, if there is at least one mismatch, then I will be returning a false. That it will be impossible to convert the start to target, okay? So I hope the problem statement is clear. Now, for solving this problem, we need to uh, see multiple observations. The first observation is if you look at the start and target and uh, write down the ordering of the pieces, then in start, the ordering of the pieces from left to right will be L, R, L. And if you look at the target, then the ordering from left to right is double L, R. In this case, if the ordering comes out to be different, then they are never going to match. It is impossible because, you know, if the ordering is different then what do i need to do i may need to move one piece beyond the other but you know that if two pieces are present i cannot swap the pieces this is not a valid operation we can only move the pieces if you have space adjacent to it otherwise if there is an r adjacent then you cannot uh, do swapping right so the ordering will never be changing and if ordering is never changing and initially you do not have uh, the exact same ordering of the items if you skip the underscores then it will never be possible to convert this start to target so in this case we will return false if you look at another observation like as mentioned in the second example even if you may have the same ordering but the frequency of all of these three unique characters must be same like there must be exactly same number of lr pieces to match Okay, so if there is exactly same number of LR pieces and the length is also same, so the underscore frequency will also be same, right? So in the start here, the underscore is having one frequency L1 and R is 0. If you look at the second example, the frequency of L is 2 and the rest all is 0. So the frequencies are not same. That means the final matching is never going to happen. 
so the two important observations we derived from here is the frequency of lr and underscore must be same in both start and target and also the ordering of l and r must be in the exact same order when you compare the start and target right so i hope this must be clear now let's look at another observation let's look at the first example in this case the frequency of l r and underscore is same as well as the ordering is also same so both the previous conditions have been followed here but then if you look at the movement the first l can only move to the left hand side i mean all the l's will only move to the left hand side right so i want to match this l present at index 1 with the l present at index 2 from the target and you should always remember that the characters in target can never move and therefore this match will never happen right because this L at index 1 can never move to the right hand side. This is an impossible movement. So in order for this type of matches to happen, the L in the target must be always at an index less than equals to wherever uh, the start L is present, isn't it? So the corresponding index L in start must always be at an index greater than equals to the index of L in the target otherwise the match is not going to happen now if you look at the second example in this case the l at first index will match with the l at zero index because we can always move to the left isn't it so this condition is being followed but if you look at the r present at index 3 which needs to be matched with the r present at index 2 since r can only move to the right hand side therefore the condition here will change that means the corresponding index r in start must always be at an index less than equals to the index of r in the target because we can always move this r to the right hand side so if the corresponding r from target is present at a left hand side index then this match is never going to happen isn't it so in this case as well i will be returning false right so i think we have made clear all the three points or two points from the previous slide and here we saw one more point so three points now how to maintain the movable range how to find out uh, in what range can i move because infinitely we cannot move all the pieces uh, wherever I want it is not possible so if I look at the first example and let's look at this uh, match of this L with the L at index 1 if I want to match it I will move this L two times and then this is going to match it is completely fine now if I want to match this second L present at index 5 and we have to match it with 3 then yes what is my movable range in this case for this second L my movable range will start from 2 and end till 5 this is the only coverage that the second l can give if you talk about the first l its coverage range was from 0 to 3 the second l will have from 2 to 5 why 2 to 5 why not 1 to 5 because this l could have been pushed to the first index as well right so why don't we say that it is from 1 to 5 because all the corresponding characters have to match exactly with the same position as well so i could never place this first l beyond this index one and that is why the target will actually define your movable range so whenever you are matching this l with the corresponding l then you know what will be the movable range always find the movable range which will be the target's previous fixed index that means wherever you saw the previous l or r from that index onwards your movable range will be defined isn't it so if the previous uh, l or r present in the target was at index 1 then your removable range for this l will always start at this index 1 plus 1 that means at 2 and it will go till 5 right so we can say that the second index will always be limiting the movement of the first index if you have taken care of this part then uh, how to manage for the r if you consider it then the r can only move to the right hand side isn't it so if you have already taken care of this case the only thing now you need to take care is the r in the start must always be to the left hand side less than equals index of the uh, r present in the target this is the only thing you need to take care so there are a lot of cases we have seen three cases and this is about maintaining the movable range now if i want to club them together then let's look at a dry run in order to understand using two pointers so in this case uh, this is my given start and this is my given target now i will be taking the first and second pointers so i'm just defining by f and s the first pointer is in start and the second pointer is on target so i will be defining a last index which will actually be the last index in the target where i saw at least an l or an r so in the beginning i will be defining a minus one 
because that will be a limiting our movement of this l from the start okay so initially i have not seen anything so i will just be mentioning minus 1 value now this underscores are not of significance so i will always use a while loop to skip all the underscores so i will skip all the underscores and my first and second will be pointing to the first item either they will end or they will be pointing to the first corresponding character now if you look at it they both are l if they both were not l if they both were not matching then definitely we need to return a false that they will never match the corresponding characters must match this will maintain that the ordering is always fine it will take care of our first condition of ordering right if i see a left in the start then the corresponding left should also be present in the target the index can be different right now we need to check about the index like is it is this l falling into the movable range of the l present in start what is the movable range of the l present in start it will be from all the index greater than this last index that means from 0 till the current index so 0 to 2 so this l that means which is present at index 1 must be within the movable range of the l present at index 2 so that we can do certain movements and actually we can match so can we do certain movement yes i can do one movement and we can match so that is why it is possible to match and when it is possible to match then i will update the last index value to the previous index where i have seen either an l or r in the target and that will be this index 1 now because this is done now right so i'll be replacing this with index 1 and now i will be uh, skipping to the next point so i'll just do first plus plus and second plus plus again in our loop i will be skipping all the uh, spaces all the spaces will be skipped okay and now my first pointer is pointing to this r at index 5 and the second pointer is pointing to this r from index 8 fine now the corresponding characters must match and yes they are matching now the second thing uh, is is it l or r is it is r so i can do only right movement so how do we uh, track this r the the targets r must always be to an index greater than equals to the uh, r in start and is is this true yes it is true so definitely it is matching it is fine so I I I will be able to always do this kind of movement and uh, I I I can move this R to index eight. So what will be my last index where I have seen L R? I will be updating it to index eight. Okay, and again I will be doing second plus plus and first plus plus, and I will skip all the spaces. So my first will be pointing to an L at index nine, uh, and the second will be pointing to uh, L at index nine because there were no spaces, so we could not skip anything. Now at this nine. Uh, they both characters are same and what will be the movable range of this l the movable range will be from an index greater than uh, the last index that means from index 9 to index 9 this is the range what is the index of this l it is it it is 9 okay so it is falling within the range of 9 to 9 and therefore it is completely fine now before moving forward i will be updating this last index to 9 this is the index at which we saw the last l or r from the target right and then i will do first plus plus and second plus plus finally again we when we go in the loop i'll skip all spaces and i am at two l's now since they both are the same characters they are l so i need to find the movable range it will be from an index greater than 9 that means from 10 till the current index 12 this index is 11 which is falling in this range so it is fine so i'll be updating this last index by 11 okay and then i'll be doing first plus plus and second plus plus skip all the characters and move to the right skip all the characters okay again these two corresponding characters are same and therefore uh, i will be checking if they are l or r so it they are r so the second r that means the one in the target must be to the right hand side or at least equal index greater than equals index right so yes 16 is greater than equals to 15 so it is completely fine and my last index will be updated to 16 and i'll be doing first plus plus and second plus plus i'll skip all the uh, vacant spaces that means underscores and uh, in the target i do not have any underscore so again this uh, two characters are same and i'll be finding the movable range of this l uh, which will be equals to the index greater than uh, 16 that means from 17 to 18 what is the index of this l 17 falling in the range and therefore it is completely fine so i'll do first plus plus and second plus plus now in this case uh, the start has actually ended but the target has not ended so once our loop ends 
then I will be skipping all the right hand side spaces if they are present so that we both end the entire string. This is just to maintain that uh, we are not left with any other unmatched character, right? So we will be skipping all the vacant spaces. And if both the strings end, then that means it was valid. And then we will return true. So in this case, we will be returning true. Okay. So this is the entire two pointer approach. Yes, it has three cases and it is a little bit tricky, but I think you can implement it. And the time complexity is order of n, space complexity order of one. Let's now look at the code. If you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months, then we have brought for you both the DSA and the system design live interview training program. The most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one on one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this code uh, we are uh, writing a utility function which is skip spaces so here we will send a string with the length of the string and the position from where I want to skip uh, spaces. And it will simply uh, skip as many times as we see underscore we will just move to the next uh, character and then we will break the loop so this is passed by reference so any movement here will actually be saved now this is the main function can change where i am given the start string and the target string i am finding the size and then of uh, taking the first pointer and the second pointer as the starting index now the limit index will start with minus one this will always remember the previous l or r index present in the target string okay now i'll be uh, doing the uh, entire processing one after another so first thing which i told you is we will be skipping spaces in both the strings start and target and then fixing the first and second pointer to uh, actually l or r values right now if we reach to the end of string that means we have done all the matches and it is completely fine we return true if the corresponding characters are not matching then definitely uh, we cannot do anything for this it is not going to match the order is not maintained so i'll return false now if the order is maintained and we have not reached to the end of string and if the current character that we are seeing in start is l we will be seeing the same in the uh, target string as well right so i'm just checking in the start if it is l then i will find the movable range which is at at an index greater than the limit index and less than equals to the first index right so if this uh, second index is actually lying outside of the range outside of the range of this movable index then i'll be returning false so that is the uh, fail case otherwise if you see an r index right if you see two r's in both start and uh, target then you know the second r must be at an index which is greater than equals to the index of the start if the second index is less than the index of the uh, start then definitely I will be returning false okay so after covering all these cases I will be remembering the current second index as my limit index because this is the present L or R value because I had already skipped all the spaces right and then I will be doing first plus plus and second plus plus and again I will be going in the loop and skipping all the spaces and again reprocess entirely in the exact same order as I had mentioned that when the loop breaks then maybe there are certain things which are left over in the in the second or the first string so i will be skipping all the characters because there may be something left in the uh, on the right hand side which is still yet to be matched and so we needed to return false in, in such cases right so let's say that at the end if you had an l and if you had an l here right and you had an r here right and if this l was actually matching with this l then it is completely fine you will end the uh, start string and you will break out of this loop but then in the target string you will be at this index so you need to skip all the uh, underscores and if you could not end then that means there is still something left to be matched but we have run out of all the characters from the start string and in that case we need to return false but if there was only an underscore and not r or l then definitely we will reach to the end of string and we will return true so this is to cover that edge case okay so i hope this is uh, clear and if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you guys in the next video thank you